My name is Elise and I'm a children's librarian at the Acton Memorial Library in Massachusetts. I also work at the Needham and Wayland Libraries. I'm here today to do a family activity craft connected to the summer reading theme, which is Imagine Your Story. This summer we're reading books and doing programs about fairy tales, enchantment, and magic. And today our craft is a magical creature, the mermaid. And let me start by telling you the things you need for this craft. So, first of all, um, I made a mess using paint and glue, so make sure you have something for your work surface. You are going to need a lightweight cardboard to cut out your mermaid. I used a cereal box. So I would suggest that. We are going to be painting both sides of this and I used two different materials. The first one I used were these dot to dot shimmer markers and they were very easy and they created a very nice effect. Here is one of them and it's very mottled. It looked to me like nature, like the skin of a rainbow trout. It came out dark. Here is one that was done on the printed surface of the cardboard where the paint is not as well absorbed, but this one also worked out. So these were a very quick and easy solution. Now I also used paint and I used tempera or poster paints, washable. I used my regular colors, but I diluted them with white and I created nicer pastel, summery, ocean-like colors. And here are the colors that I used. And I created six different colors, just using my regular sort of primary color paints. So, that is something you'll need. Now, when I do a project that's sort of a one um, paper or cardboard and we paint it and glue objects on, I like to make it a little more interesting for children, their caregivers, and me. And so I come up with different techniques and that makes that add some interest. In this case, we painted both sides using paint brushes and I used the colors that I had made and that is one approach. It did take a while and it took several coats so I would suggest that you paint one day, let them dry and then the next day you decorate your mermaids. Um, the paint dried very quickly so I just left my paints out and every 30 minutes I would add a new coat. So this works out well you can decorate both sides. You can add a string and hang your mermaid from a window where the light will hit all these reflective items on it and sparkle. Now, the new technique that I added for this was to use a sponge and a clothespin. I cut up the sponge into smaller pieces like this and this became our paintbrush. You can use the edges or the surface, and it changes how you paint. Children like this, it's a lot of fun to do. And I'll show you the different ways it showed up. Here is one that was done on the cardboard side. And I would, using my paintbrush and the sponge, I would just dab and this and you get a lot of paint. And I then would blot it. And, and then I would add more colors and blot it. And you ended up with something like this, or like that, or like that. Sort of mottled, muted. You don't see the boundaries of each color that blends together. But that didn't work well on this side. Each time I blotted, it took all the paint off because this has a finish on it and it didn't absorb the paint that well. 
So here, I just did a very different one. I took my paint and I just spread it. And then I took the next color and the next color and the next color. I layered them, I worked, covered the whole surface, covered up the print text, and I let them dry. It took a little bit longer because the paint was thicker and there was a nice texture. And this is what these look like. They're more colorful and they're beautiful, I think. They just took a long time to dry, not that long, but they were quicker to make. So these are the two painting techniques I'm showing you today. Now, when I chose items to glue onto our mermaid, I know we could use sparkly things, but I wanted to root this a little bit more in nature. And I looked to the ocean for inspiration. And I went to my seashell collection and gathered and pulled out the smaller shells that I knew I could glue onto the mermaid. In fact, I even made a mouth out of one like this and just glued them on and decorated them. And there they are. And that made me think about my larger seashells. And I thought, gee, we could make a home for the mermaids. I even had some driftwood in my seashell collection. I had these large seashells and smaller ones. And now the mermaid, and you could paint the background or underneath. And now the mermaid has a place to go. So when your child plays with this, this is part of the props. So, but in addition to seashells, I wanted sand as if the mermaid had rested on the sand and I decided to use sandpaper. And if you tear sandpaper, you get a nice rough, natural, irregular edge. And I would just glue these pieces in different sizes onto the mermaids so that it looked like they had been resting on the beach. So that was how I added sand. For the hair, I wanted it to look like kelp or seaweed. And I had these, this thick green yarn. And so I use that. I also had this crinkly shredded paper from packaging. I would sort of crumple it up take a small piece and trim it and glue it on. And I use this as seaweed on their body and also on their hair. So we had seaweed and kelp, sand, shells, and then I wanted to add mother of pearl, which comes from the ocean. Mother of pearl is the outer edge of a cultured pearl. It's also found in oyster and mussel shells. You know you have real mother of pearl buttons because the backside is rough and dark. So I gathered all of my mother of pearl buttons. I used the little ones for eyes and I decorated the mermaids. And these are iridescent. And when the light shines on them and they move, you see other colors. If you have abalone, that will work too. I couldn't glue this on, but this could be a home. It is an abalone shell. This is the exterior. And here is the beautiful iridescent interior. Now, I also used regular sparkly things like stick-on jewels and rhinestones. And these were fun for the children to work with. I had some plastic silver discs. They worked. I even had a mirror. I had these colored, lightweight plastic shapes. Those worked. I had beautiful sewing notion. It's wire with iridescent beads, and you could use any kind of bead. Now, I also went to my produce section, and I gathered, I have a collection, <laughs> of plastic from bags. Sometimes you buy avocados in a bag. And I use this in different projects. This reminded me, this fishnet pattern, of the surface of a mermaid scale. And it comes in many different kinds of 
of shapes and colors and even wine bottles come in very strong plastic. But it also reminded me of the nets that trap larger animals and they need our help to get out. And it occurred to me that maybe I would do a mermaid who was not in great shape to reflect what's happening in our ocean. There's way too much plastic, islands of it floating. So in this case, her mermaid has ingested some plastic and she is in a trap. All the other mermaids I did were pretty, but I thought this was important too. Now, I've showed you how I painted these. I showed you all the different materials that I've used. I've showed you how to create a home for your mermaid. And now I want to talk about a book that inspired me. It's called Julian is a Mermaid, and this was done by Jessica Love, who wrote the words and did the artwork. It was published by Candlewick Press. The book is filled with watery images, swimming pools, and, and then later Julian dreams about becoming a mermaid and goes into the water, and he is in a whirlpool of fish and different ocean creatures that's beautiful. And he is becoming a mermaid. And when he goes home, oh, and there's even fire hydrants spouting water. And when Julian goes home, he searches in his house for things that he can use just the way I do. And he finds a plant, a fern for his hair, and flowers and he also looks and chooses a curtain to create a fish tail. Your child could use a tablecloth or a sheet or a blanket and then his grandmother gives him a beautiful piece of jewelry and they are ready now to join the beautiful mermaid parade on the beach. I love the front and end papers too. Here the grandmothers and Julian are in the swimming pool and here they are and now they have all become mermaids. So I hope you enjoy this craft to make it as well as to play with it and have a great time. Thank you. Bye.